Hi, I'm Dr. Lori. This is Real Bargains. So you think everyone knows what all the values of everything is and all the prices are too high and you can't get anything at an estate sale. You can't get anything at, uh, online at, at, at one of the thrift stores online like shopgoodwill.com. Come on. Come on. I'm going to prove you wrong again. First of all, this episode, uh, Picasso prints, that's right, at an estate sale. Uh, pearls that are found online and also books and don't forget studio art glass in the manner of Dale Chihuly. Hmm, let's get started on Real Bargains. I have permission to retell these stories and the first story is about a Ross Nader studio art glass vessel. It's big, it's an early work, it's a beautiful color green and it's characteristic of his of his style. What's interesting about it is it's signed and the listing even said it was signed my video caller got this and she got this at shop goodwill online and she said i wanted it because it was one cent shipping everybody's concerned about shipping i know shipping's a big deal but if you're getting bargains like this pay the shipping so but okay so she was getting her one cent shipping she said it said it right there that it was signed it said who the artist was they misspelled his name but misspellings are going to help a lot of you shoppers that's for sure um, but the piece was beautiful and the, um, and the photograph said it all. So she goes in, there was one bid and it was $50. She said, well, nobody else is bidding on this. I'm going to bid 51 and she won the auction. So she won the online auction. She gets it. It's one cent shipping. So she pays $51 and one cent <laughs> for this beautiful piece. That's what she paid for this particular piece. It's a gorgeous example. So gorgeous that on today's market, other people have paid for similar pieces like this by this artist signed works of studio art glass value on it. $3,500. Oh, it was a gorgeous piece and I was happy to see it. It's a real bargain. This next real bargain is jewelry. That's right. It's jewelry. It's pearls. It's beautiful. It's amazing. She got it. She called me on a video call. I helped her to appraise it. She was shocked. And here's the story. She goes to a thrift store. She always looks for jewelry. Now that she's been watching the channel, she surveys for jewelry. Why wouldn't you? And she's looking at this and she says, I saw it in there and it looked like the clasp was sparkling. It looked like they, it had the luster that you talk about in your pearl videos, Dr. Lori. They looked like it was consistent. The size was the same. It looked good to me. And the, and the label, the price tag was still on it at $9 and 99 cents. I thought, I'm not even taking out the loop. I'm not even taking out the loop. I'm buying them for $9 and 99 cents. I'm buying these. Yes, you should buy them. All the characteristics that I talked to you about. Look for the luster. Look at the clasp. See if it's marked. She said, I didn't take out the loop. And my big surprise was once I got home because I didn't take out the loop at the store. I, uh, I asked for them. They gave them to me. I paid for them. I left. So she leaves the store. She gets home. She takes out her loop and she finds that this beautiful uh, 20 inch long double strand pearls, seven millimeters for each pearl, lovely luster. And these pieces she tests with the diamond tester that I recommend on my specials and shopping page. And I receive compensation when you purchase one of my recommended products. She tests them with the diamond tester and she finds that she has a half a carat of real diamonds in the clasp. The clasp is marked 14 karat gold. That's right. There's two strands of pearls, right? They're Japanese, beautiful, uh, cultured pearls. They're in gorgeous condition. She paid $9.99 for them. I don't care what they're worth. They're worth more than $9.99, right? But they are worth a lot. They're worth $2,000. When I was on the video call, she shrieked with joy when I told her they're worth $2,000 for this beautiful double strand of cultured pearls. Look out because I'll tell you, you think they all know everything at the, at the thrift stores and they're pricing everything too high. There's a lot of bargains out there. That's a real bargain too. My next real bargain comes from a video caller and you might be surprised by this. Uh, she was buying a storage locker and she bought a whole locker. You know, a lot of you do this. A lot of you do this. A lot of you heard about this. A lot of you have never done this. Um, but she bought a whole storage locker for $20. And in that storage locker were all different types of things, including this particular book. And this book is a catalog raisonné from 1948 to 1997 nearly 40 years, 50 years, excuse me, nearly 50 years 
of, of course, the work of Prince by Roy Lichtenstein. Roy Lichtenstein, the great pop artist. And this is a Mary Cortlet book. And this particular book was published by Hudson Hills Press. Actually, I wrote a book that was published by Hudson Hills Press too. So this particular book is the Catalogue Raisonné. If you don't know what that is, a Catalogue Raisonné is the career work in a particular of a particular artist. And in this case, it's all of his prints. Now, Lichtenstein was very well known for, of course, his printmaking. And this work actually documents all of the prints that were done with photographs of, of course, Roy Lichtenstein. So it's a big, important research book for uh, modern art historians, for artists, art lovers, for folks. People look for it. Now, it doesn't have its dust jacket. It is a little bit dusty, but it's in basically good condition. The spine is nice and strong. It does. It is hardcover. And of course, it came out of the storage locker. So she said that she, we're on the video call and my video caller says, Dr. Lori, you know, I'm looking all around it. I don't know, is this really valuable? They say art books are valuable. Art books are extremely valuable. People are looking for all different types of art books. Catalog raisonnés, where you are actually providing all of the research information, right, about a particular artist's work, right? That's what a lot of people are looking for. So in this particular case, this is going to be a big real bargain. I got to tell her that this book, based on actual sales records where similar pieces have sold online and offline in the whole market, well, I analyzed the whole market, $3,500 for this book. She got the whole storage locker for 20 bucks. She paid pennies for this book. She's going to make, she stands to make $3,500 on the resale market. That's a real bargain too. When you're looking for these books, I want you to look for good condition. As I told you in one of my videos about, of course, what you look for with vintage and antique books. This next real bargain comes from a video caller and it's all about buying on an online thrift store platform. She bought this piece on shopgoodwill.com and she bought this particular piece for $3. That's right. It was in a larger jewelry lot that she paid $100 for, but when you when you drill down, she paid about $3 for this piece. Look at the size of this pearl. A naturally developed rokai, naturally developed, somewhat deformed pearl. It's a beautiful example of a necklace with, of course, this nice pearl. Here's the kicker. The pearl is actually encrusted with gemstones. Diamond, ruby, sapphire, right into the actual pearl. And the pearl is quite oversized. In addition to its unusual but naturally shaped form, it's really quite pretty. Um, it's about an inch long and it is pretty weighty, my video caller told me. It's a beautiful example and a great buy for $3. What's it worth? $2,250. These pieces are rather rare. Obviously, it's made by a studio jeweler, someone who makes jewelry as, of course, their profession. And this piece is a one-of-a-kind example, a beautiful pendant and some nice gemstones too. That's a real bargain. This next real bargain comes from Dr. Lori's class. That's right, I hold classes. I hope you'll join me at one or two when you have a chance. This piece was purchased at an online platform, a sales platform. They do auctions, but they also do buy it now. When my student saw this, she said, I bought it right away. I knew exactly that I should buy this piece. It's a squash blossom Native American necklace. It's set in sterling silver. That's what the blossoms are, as well as the links and the necklace portion, but also turquoise. Turquoise is set in the Naha pendant at the bottom and also turquoise throughout with respect to this particular necklace. It's a beautiful example of a very famous Native American form. The style, of course, of squash blossom necklaces uh, dates all the way back to the 19th century. It's really beautiful. She said, I look for jewelry. I know what to look for. I like to identify the quality. I watch your videos so I know what's junk and what's not. I like you to know what's junk and what's not. And she said, when I saw this, I couldn't buy it fast enough. It measures 24 inches in length. It's in beautiful condition. And I don't think that the seller really knew what she or he had. She said, I paid $65 for it. During my class, when I did the appraisals, I appraised it, you ready, at $1,800. That's right, sterling silver, lot of weight, beautiful workmanship, inset turquoise and it's true real natural turquoise you know not composite to look like turquoise a gorgeous example for 65 dollars 
she can reap the benefits of $1,800 on the retail market. Beautiful. That's a real bargain too. This next real bargain is from the Dr. Lori class. And this piece is a wonderful example of what unusual pieces you can find at a thrift store. This was a thrift store purchase a few years ago. And my class member said, it's been sitting on a shelf for a long, long time. I finally am going to ask you about it, Dr. Lori. So I said, well, great. Let's see what you've got. I said, I said, I'm really surprised that this is the object you want me to look at that you would pick this up. She said, I thought it was so unusual and so beautiful. I love the way the clay was actually formed. Thought it was a gorgeous sculpture. What is it? Well, it's a whistle vessel. In the pre-Columbian culture of, the Peru, of Peru, the Peruvians actually created whistle vessels. So you can actually whistle into the top of it and it makes a sound. And then of course, you'll notice it has a big round handle that you could put your finger through and hold it and it would hold different types of material. It's in the figural form of an animal and it has a little tiny human head at the bottom, which also relates to particular sacrifices of the pre-Columbian folks. Now, I've been to, of course, South and Central America many times, and it's a fascinating culture to actually look at these particular pieces, and the objects are wonderful. These pieces, you can see them as young as the 19th century or as old as, of course, the 15th century. Her piece dates between about the 17th century to the 19th century. If I had to narrow it down, I'd say it's a 19th century example. But these pieces were made, whistle vessels were made all the way back into the Spanish colonial time period, just after, of course, Christopher Columbus was in that, those areas. So after 1492 and before about 1900. This piece is a beautiful example from the 1800s and it's in great shape, gorgeous condition. She said that she paid $1.49 for it, $1.49 for this piece. I'm sorry, $1.49 for anything is fantastic. You know, I don't think you can get a drip of coffee for that anymore. So this particular piece is a beautiful example and it's quite old in gorgeous shape. The clay, of course, has been um, molded and also fired. And it's relatively large, you know, it's about six to eight inches tall, and then it's about seven inches wide. Value on the piece, I appraised it at $800. That's what these pieces sell for on the market today. It was a real bargain and a real steal from the thrift store. This next real bargain comes from the Dr. Lori class. And this person who was in my class purchased this piece at an estate sale in a very wealthy area. The estate sale had a little bit of, a, of a, a, a trick to it. It was online. He didn't have to go and look to the estate sale. He didn't have to drive anywhere, but it was in a very wealthy area. And that was why he decided that to get it at that particular estate sale. He said he was trying to furnish his home with things from estate sales inexpensively. And he said, if I'm going to buy from estate sales, I want to buy from the wealthy estates. Makes sense, right? So he found this particular estate sale and he said, I was a little disappointed because there were three of these, three of what? Picasso lithograph prints from the 1960s of bullfighters. He said there were three of these, but I was outbid on the other two by someone else. Because I really wanted to get all three and have all three of them up in my home. But to get a Picasso lithograph, I thought was great at the price that I paid. I said, okay. Couple of things about it, it's numbered, it's signed, it's pencil signed, it's dated, all correct, all exactly as you would see them. A lot of you have Picasso pieces, you have Picasso prints, you have Picasso posters, a lot of you have things that relate to Picasso, even Picasso ceramics some of you have. Um, but Picasso pieces are out there in abundance and they are valuable. So if you see them and you're not sure, it might be worth it to pick them up and then ask me whether or not they're the real thing. This particular piece was indeed the real thing. And this lithograph was of a very characteristic type of subject matter for Pablo Picasso, the great Spanish modernist, bullfighters. It's bullfighters in the arena. This is called the game with the cape. Basically very, very well known of how they, of course, uh, use their red cape to taunt the bull. And this piece was nine by 12. It was framed in a beautiful frame. It was in very good condition as well. Okay, so we only got one of the three of those lithographs, but he still got a great bargain. Value, he paid $325 for this work of art. Now, Picasso's not going to be cheap. We understand that. But even with a $325 investment, he still got a real bargain. 
This piece is worth $1,750, including the frame. It was a real bargain, beautiful condition. It didn't have any acid burning from the mat. It had a nice frame. It's in, it's in of course, um, a, nice, a nice presentation. And lo and behold, it's Picasso. It's a real bargain too. I'm Dr. Lori. That's Real Bargains. I hope you find your real bargain real soon.